If you're a Fortnite fan, chances are you've heard this voice before. Yo, what's going on, Timmy fans? From commentating on huge Fortnite tournaments. Stretch or Mega. Mega went out deep. He went in early. He's pushing back in. He knows he doesn't have it. He can't get the med kit off. That's it. As long as Stretch heals this, Zayt, Saf, and Stretch will be going through to the grand final. What? To being fired by Epic Games. Basically, I had a meeting this morning. I've been dropped from the broadcast today. And then telling the stories of many Fortnite Pros. Kyle Booger Geersdorf has become a household name. Nick A30 is now officially the king of Fortnite. You already know who I'm talking about. It's the big clip. This is the entire story of Aussie antics. I've told a lot of people's stories, but for the first time, I'm telling my own. Sean Cochran, also known as Ozzy Antics, was born on November 4th, 1993 in Australia. Like many people we talk about on this channel, and like many of you watching, Ozzy's love for video games started out when he was a kid. I've been playing video games since I was born, basically. My brother's five years older than me. He was into gaming since he was like three or four years old, so I literally was born playing games. My first vivid memory of gaming was when I was five years old. I got a Nintendo 64 with Rampage on it for Christmas. A lot of people watching this are too young to even know what that is, but it was a big deal at the time. I literally beat it with my brother that day. And that was one of my first vivid memories of gaming. But yeah, my brother is a massive gamer. He's got tattoos all up his arms of gaming. So I pretty much just grew up around it. And before we keep going, yes, if you haven't noticed yet, this is my own personal interview with Ozzy. You cannot find out this information anywhere else on YouTube. And we talked to him about some amazing things. So keep watching to the end of this video to find out everything you need to know about the ups and downs of Ozzy. Anyways, getting back to the story, it didn't take long for Ozzy to start getting serious about video games. The first game that I guess I took really, really seriously and got extremely good at was Overwatch. I got top 500 in season one and season two of Overwatch. But I don't know, there was never really, as far as like the career with streaming and gaming, the goal was never to be like... I was never trying to make it a career. I never thought it was going to be a career. I just wanted to go live streaming and just have people to talk to while playing it. And then it kind of just kept snowballing one thing into the other. But just because he was gaming didn't mean he had no life. He went to school and even played sports as well. I played a lot of sports at a very young age. For me, sports was a competitive outlet, but also I absolutely hated school. I couldn't stand school. So sports was a way to get out of as much school as possible. So I was playing everything. I played rugby league, rugby union. I played soccer, football for the Europeans. I even played weird sports like water polo. I was playing like basketball. Literally, if you get me out of school, I would play the sports. But I did grow up being very, very competitive with sports. But it was always really weird because I didn't get along with a lot of other people I played sports with because all I want to do is play video games. And at the time, <laughs> video games was not as cool. I'm 30 years old. You know, like 20 years ago, playing games was not as cool as it is today. And I would always get relentlessly bullied by the people I played sports with, which probably turned me even more to video games, which obviously was then my competitive outlet. And as he grew up, video games became an important escape from reality for Ozzy. I never really got along with people my age. I never really liked school. I was pretty badly bullied through high school just because I was the kid who wanted to go home and play World of Warcraft. I still played sports. I actually played sports at a representative and state level. So I was still an active kid. I was still being healthy, but I just never really got along with kids my age on a social level. So games was always my escape. Ozzy continued to game even after high school, but unlike a lot of YouTubers, including me, Ozzy actually got a degree from university. I just finished my degree. I've got my bachelor's degree in psychology. I just finished that. And then I was doing my certificate three and four in fitness because I was becoming a personal trainer. So during the majority of my early streaming career for about two years in before I went full time, I was running my own personal training business. And uh, because I had the psych degree, I'd work mostly with clients that had like mental health issues. And I would basically like liaison and work with their therapist. And I, we would use training as like a part of their rehabilitation tool. It was a really cool job. I honestly loved it. it. It paid really well. And I was super passionate about it. So I wasn't like trying to escape that to get into streaming. Back in the early 2010s, it was was expected of everyone to go to university, get a normal job, and live a normal life. Social media was barely a career option at that point, if at all. It was at best a hobby, and at worst a huge waste of time, especially if you were asking your parents. But slowly as time went on, content creation seemed less and less like a dream, and more of a reality that you could turn into a career. And Ozzy decided he wanted to take a crack at this streaming thing, so he created his channel, Ozzy Antics, on May 23rd, 
3rd of 2018. When I began streaming was like probably one of the worst starts to streaming anyone's ever had for the most part. I live with my parents. We had two down, one megabit up internet, which if you guys don't know, that is like, like slow even for like, you know, six, seven years ago. But I just could not stream, but I wanted to so badly. So I very first started making YouTube videos. I made terrible montages. I wish I still had them. I deleted all of them. I edited them myself. They were awful. But I then ended up getting a satellite internet. It cost me like $2,000 to get a little satellite receiver with another antenna that I put on my roof. And the only spot that I could get even internet good enough to stream at in any quality was on my balcony. And if it was a hot day, it would overheat and I would have timers <laughs> on my stream to go and actually like rotate ice packs in a cooler box to keep it cool so I could keep streaming. And if it was cloudy, I couldn't stream. It was just an absolute nightmare. And then I spent more money to get another satellite, which then didn't work either. It was terrible. So the first like six months of me streaming was just doing it in the worst quality, but I just, I loved streaming so much. I just wanted to so badly. As you can probably tell by now, Ozzy was incredibly dedicated to streaming, but he knew he couldn't continue to stream on the balcony at his parents' house. He needed to figure something else out. When I first started streaming, like the way the kind of like moment for me was my friend went away on vacation and he asked me to house it. And I was like, hey man, like I kind of do this thing where like, you know, I stream video games and stuff. He didn't really understand what it was, but I was like, man, you got really good internet. Can I like just bring my PC to your house? Like, yeah, man, please do. Like you're house sitting, like do what you want to do. And that was when I first experienced like actual internet. And it was so amazing. And I was like, man, this makes my content so much easier. It makes streaming so much more fun. I need to keep doing this. He came back and I didn't know how to approach it with him. And I had the conversation and he actually, we ended up, I rented his garage space. And that was when I kind of started to realize like maybe I can do this full time. Cause that's when my viewers started to go up. It was right before I bought my house. But yeah, if it wasn't for my mate, Kevin, I don't think I would be here. Cause he let me stream out of his garage. It was like 45 degrees Celsius. That's like 115, 120 degrees Fahrenheit during the middle of the day in there. Like I would have to stop stream sometimes or end stream cause of the heat, but conditions, you know, weather permitting, I actually had internet I could stream off. When I first bought my house and I got into streaming, I got a fiber internet plan for $36,000. And this is where everyone made fun of me all over on my stream. This is where even my most loyal supporters were like, you are an idiot. But I was like, look, you don't understand from someone who's gone through all this of internet. It means so much to me. I want to be able to stream whenever I want because even the internet I got in my new house would still cut out all the time. I'm in the middle of a tournament. It would cut out and it would infuriate me. So it was worth it for me despite being so so expensive. I was like, this is what I want to do to be able to stream. Because again, it wasn't about making a whole bunch of money. I was like, look, you guys support me. I make this money from you guys. I'm happy to spend it back to be able to do more of it. Like that was the goal. I didn't make any money from streaming for the first two or three months of being full time to make back the money that I'd spent in the last two and a half years on content from like microphone to like my overlays to like green screen, like all of the gear that I bought was more money than I made for two and a half years of streaming. When it came to the internet, it was just like reinvest it back. Like it got me this far. You guys keep supporting me. It's what I need to make better content, so I'll do it. Yeah, he lost thousands of dollars trying to stream. It makes me really happy that my internet works because I can't imagine having to struggle with that. And he did all of that to barely stream to any viewers at all. He wouldn't tell any of his friends or family that he was streaming. It was just him, his computer, his Fortnite game, and of course, you guys. The few people that were watching him at the time meant a lot to Ozzy. Yeah, so I first started streaming Fortnite and it was just playing, just, I was just playing solos and people would watch me and I had, I was a TTV kid. I had TTV in my name. So like, you know, you'd beat someone. I was pretty decent because I came from from being like really good at PUBG. And then people would come to my stream and be like, like, you know, talk me and flame me. And then I would be really nice to them. So they would stick around. And then as I got like, you know, five or 10 viewers within a couple weeks, which I was super surprised by. My original goal was 10 viewers. By the end of the year, I started in like October. I just wanted to hit 10 viewers a single time. I started in October and I had it within like a week. And then people would stick around. And then I was like, oh, cool. Like, let's play together. Let's do some squads, you know, with people in chat. And then and that grew my community more. And then I was like, oh man, not everyone can get involved. So I actually started doing like stream snap games where I would make a squad with my viewers and then we'd get into a Discord and I'd count down like, you know, five, four, three, two, one, and everyone could queue up in versus, but the rule was you had to play as a solo. It was really fun. Everyone loved it. I did that for a while. And then I was lucky enough to be one of the first people to ever get customs when you could actually do custom matchmaking. So I then started doing customs with viewers. It was just kind of a fun thing to do. By playing with viewers and letting them stream snipe, Aussie was building a really awesome community. I mean, I don't know many people willing to put up with stream snipers, so good for Aussie. And luckily for him, his stream just kept growing and growing and growing. It seemed like that crazy investment into his internet might potentially start to pay off. 
But around the same time, Ozzy decided that he wanted to expand from just Twitch and also make some YouTube videos. The first official video up on Ozzy's channel was uploaded on March 9th, 2019. Although in our interview, Ozzy did say that there were some other videos posted earlier than that, but they've all been deleted because he said they were kind of embarrassing. Anyways, this video was titled Moving Storm Creative Map with Code. Best Fortnite practice map ever created. And that really long title was very descriptive because that's exactly what the video is about. I'm just making a quick video as you probably could guess from the title on my new creative map. He started to occasionally upload videos from that point on with everything from tutorials to VOD reviews. But Ozzy's main focus was still on streaming and he was so successful and his audience continued to grow to a point that he could go full time as a streamer in January of 2020. I went full time in streaming was because COVID just hit. I just bought a house that was about an hour and a half away. So I was going to lose all my clients anyway. Bought my first house with my wife. So I was like, look, I've lost all my clients. Like world's going into lockdown. Can't really go to the gym. I guess I'll just give this streaming thing a go full time and see what happens. And then within like two months, it just exploded. I went from like three or 400 subs on Twitch, maybe like a few, like 500 viewers, I think four or five hundred viewers to like a few thousand, like everything changed within like two months. It was just, again, I guess right place, right time. But it was because I was just forced to take that leap instead of waking up at 4 a.m. working for eight hours and then streaming for a few hours when I was tired and then going to bed, I could like actually put time into it. Going full time meant that he could finally dedicate all of his energy back into his audience and streaming Fortnite, which he loved so much. And this was a huge move for Ozzy. Not only did the quality of his streams increase, he was also able to reach a broader audience and grow his fan base largely. I wasn't working mornings anymore. I could actually stream North American tournaments. And that's when I went from getting about three to 400 viewers in March with about three to 400 subs to going to 12, 1300 average viewers and like 3000 something subs. And the timing could not have been any better because in just a few months, the world was forced to retreat into their home for months and even years due to COVID. And since nobody had anything better to do, they turned to YouTube and video games, which skyrocketed everybody's views, especially Aussie. I didn't actually watch World Cup, which was crazy. I didn't do watch parties during World Cup. I started chapter one season X for the first FN series when I started watching. I only watched OCE for a few seasons and then I started started with North America in early chapter two, because that's when I went full time. I was actually up early enough where I could watch North America. I wasn't at my regular job. Then I think it was chapter two, season two. There was no official broadcast, but then Baller TW was starting his own like for the community broadcast. And he brought on a whole bunch of the regular casters. And he saw that I was doing watch parties and reached out and asked me if I wanted to be involved. And that's what got me involved then with Sundown, who was working with Epic and was an official broadcaster. So we casted together a few games and stuff. And then when they brought back the official <laughs> broadcast the next season, mm -hmm. that's when I got the call up to work for Epic. Shortly after this, Ozzy was signed to Epic Games as an official Fortnite commentator, which would lead to the biggest drama of his career, and we'll talk about that soon. But around this same time, Ozzy also released his second YouTube channel called Extra Antics. This channel featured whatever didn't exactly fit on his main channel, like stream highlights, reaction videos, you name it. In addition to the second channel and his Twitch stream, Ozzy was now putting out multiple videos on his main YouTube channel while streaming, uploading highlights to his second channel, and being being an official Epic Games Fortnite commentator, he was busy to say the least. But unfortunately, his time would free up a little bit more as he wasn't going to be an Epic Games commentator for much longer. In June of 2021, Ozzy was commentating on his personal channel when this happened. Oh, bro, so fing odd. Oh, Luna, you win this though, right? Oh, he's on 17 points too. Gee, oh my god. Oh, you have to be such a loser. Holy sh. Like, oh man. Like, you just know, oh, Rivley, I don't know you, but you're going nowhere in life, dude. Like, no one likes you. Holy f. I'm sorry. I hate being toxic, but God, you are such a f***ing loser. It's insane to me. So just to give a little bit of extra context to that clip, this happened during the FNCS All-Star Showdown in the OCE region on June 26th of 2021. If his last game went well, Lunar was lined up to win first place in FNCS. Rivley, on the other hand, was not doing so well. He was pretty low in the tournament standings with only 17 points, almost in last place. And there was no way he could even come close to winning the tournament let alone win that much more money, no matter how well he played in this last game. So instead of just resigning to defeat, he decided to take everyone else down with him, and he landed on top of Lunar in the last game, trying to take him out early and prevent him from winning. It was the solo FNCS, it was the finals, the first pro player I ever met, one of the closest friends in the scene. He was in first place, going to the last game, and someone in, I think, last or second last, landed on him, 
killed him, griefed him. He was sitting there in tears. I was just heartbroken. I felt so bad for him. He was also like on the very edge of kind of legitimizing to his parents that he could be a professional player. Like that was his moment. And the money he was going to make from that was going to prove to his parents he could be a pro player. But I basically just said, this kid's a loser and I don't think his parents should be proud of him. Like, I don't think his parents raised him right. And looking back, I was like, you know what? Maybe I could have been a little bit more fair. But at the same time, I was like, look, I really don't think that's okay. Like, you went into that game with the mindset, I am going to take money from this player. I'm going to ruin their tournament. I'm going to ruin their career. And I'm okay with that. And I wasn't okay with that. I wasn't just going to sit back and say nothing about it. I've just watched one of my closest friends get griefed. And that was a huge problem. This player actually reached out to me and apologized. He was like, look, man, I'm so sorry for what happened to your career. Like, I feel really, really bad. I was peer pressured into it. It was a really dumb decision. I really regret it. He ended up doing it again a couple of seasons later. Wow. So you got to take that with a grain of salt. Wow. But this move was pretty dirty. Most people in the Fortnite community would consider this griefing or at least being kind of a jerk move. And obviously, Ozzy was not having any of it. Even though this happened on Ozzy's personal stream, the people at Epic Games saw this rant and were not happy about it so they decided to do something about it i woke up the next day and it was i got had a whole bunch of messages from epic games it was like before you get on today we have to have a call i was like, okay and i got in a call got on discord and i got in a call with epic games and it was two people one person i've worked with a lot and two people i'd never ever talked to at epic games never talked to. they didn't bring in like people that i work with all the time and they basically were like look you know we saw what happened last night people reported to us we're really not okay with what you said today you're gonna have to sit it out we're gonna bring sunday into cast for you you're gonna have to apologize and then we can talk about what that means for next season and I was like, I apologize for what I said. They're like, yeah, I'm like, but I'm not sorry for what I said. Like, I still stand by it. I'm sorry. Like, I, I meant it. And they were like, oh, okay. But I mean, like, if you want to keep working on the broadcast, we're definitely going to have to make a public statement. Like, we can't have you as a caster having these, like, such strong opinions on your own social media channel. And I was like, I, I don't know what to tell you then. Like, I'm not sorry. I'm not going to say I'm sorry. So they were like, look, I mean, that means we're going to have to part ways. Of course, all of this happened behind the scenes and nobody on the outside really knew yet why Ozzy had ended his official broadcasting career. So he did what he did best. He streamed and he explained everything to the fans when he could. I want to make sure as well, chat, don't make this like a full on, like we hate Epic, L Epic, L Fortnite thing. Like I understand where they're coming from. I fully do. Basically, I had a meeting this morning. I've been dropped from the broadcast today potentially i could be on the broadcast in the future but i broke community guidelines because last night when i was doing a viewing party for oce it was pretty public obviously everyone was talking about it luna who was in first place who was the first ever pro that i met in the scene literally the first person i ever met at my first event that i was casting like two years ago so again someone who's really close to me i'm not trying to condone or make an excuse for what i did but he got griefed in my opinion i know Epic's not gonna like me even saying the word grief. Obviously you can land wherever you want, but when someone who's on 17 points lands on someone in first who has a chance to make life-changing money, I'm gonna call that a grief. I called the kid a loser. That's what I said. I went on to explain that I just don't understand how people can lack the empathy to then just want to go and take so much money and a chance from someone. I didn't say, go send this kid a bunch of hate. I didn't post his social media anywhere. I didn't try to say, I hate this kid. You should give him death threats. But Epic has interpreted that as me using my audience to incite hate towards someone else. Despite the controversy, however, he had the entire Fortnite community on his side. It went crazy. I went like, like I had like 50,000 viewers on Twitch. I had people like Zayt making their name justice for Ozzy. Everyone was wearing my skin combo. <laughs> Zayt ended up getting kicked from the tournament because he made his name that and then just built a town in the middle of the map and just stood there. Like, it was so weird, but I just didn't expect that level of, you know, support. I really didn't. And then it turned into a whole bunch of drama with like Keemstar going to Epic Games and saying that, you know, this is the dumbest thing you've ever done. You just, you know, you lost someone who actually cared about the game and it was crazy. But at the time, I need to make sure people know that like, I really thought that was going to be the decline of my career. Although the initial reaction was very positive, Ozzy still didn't know how this would affect his career as a whole. As he said earlier in the interview, this was his main source of income, and I can only imagine the stress that this put on Ozzy. But little did he know, his career was far from over, because he was about to make a huge announcement that would change his career and life forever. Ozzy was about to join NRG. I know it's hard to remember the people we used to be. Hello? Yo, Ozzy, it's Gritty. I just talked with Andy. Look, we want you to pack your bags, move on down to the Energy Hot Pockets Castle. Are you in? Can I bring Steve?
everyone was always like yeah dude why are you still in australia like you're waking up you know 2 a.m watching tournaments like why don't you just go to na and i thought about it for so long and i was only going to do it if i could do it as part of a team and that's what it was and then we made so much good content i flew out and then unfortunately everything kind of started to go a little bit south i went to mm -hmm. canada i was only supposed to be there for about two weeks to three weeks to get my visa it ended up taking six months to get my visa i was moving all around canada i couldn't really fly home because if i flew home then i would miss any like last minute appointment they were trying to book me i ended up then just being like yo guys when when am I getting into the country? And they're like, look, all right, six months. So I ended up booking a long-term Airbnb because again, I had no furniture, I had nothing with me. I wasn't supposed to be there. And then finally I got down to the US, but by that point, NRG had basically given up on Fortnite and then just one day woke up to a phone call. Hey, we're dropping our entire Fortnite roster, including you. As time went on and Aussie was stuck being in Canada, people were starting to lose interest in Fortnite, it seemed. The lockdowns all over the world were ending and people were returning to school jobs and touching grass. So his views and that of many other Fortnite players and creators started to drop. On top of that, Fortnite competition payouts were getting smaller and smaller, and it was clear that something as big as the World Cup would never happen again. Although this didn't affect all content creators as much as the pro players, it did have a huge effect on gaming organizations. Because of this, NRG started dropping its Fortnite team until the only two members left were Clix and Aussie. And then they made an inevitable announcement to the public. All right, this is it. Um, Clix is officially no longer an NRG and Ozzy will be finishing his time in America. And then after that, Energy will no longer be in Fortnite. Ozzy was not without an org for too long though, because on March 4th of 2023, he announced that he would be officially joining Dignitas. This was not a huge surprise to his community. Everyone at this point kind of expected him to sign with Dig. It was not a very well kept secret, but even though it was obvious, this was still a huge and exciting move for Ozzy. By signing with Dignitas, Ozzy was allowed to keep his visa and eventually settle down and stay in America. And for those of you who don't know, it's incredibly important to keep up a visa. Without one, you aren't allowed to work or even really be in America and you'd get kicked out. For the next few months, things were going great for Ozzy. He was and still is to this day in a successful gaming organization, he was running three YouTube channels, live streaming, and just generally killing the content creation game. But there was one thing that Ozzy had always wanted that he didn't have for himself yet, and that was a child in his life. And on June 8th of 2023, Ozzy would make probably the biggest announcement that he'll ever have in his entire life. His wife Annie was expecting their very first child, and obviously everyone in the community was really excited for him, myself included. And December of 2023 saw Charlotte Antics. Well, that's not her real name, but that's what we'll call her because Ozzy's daughter Charlotte was born. Of course, having a kid is a huge life-changing accomplishment, and some people might use having a kid as an excuse to take a step away from the internet. But for Ozzy, having a kid inspired him to not only do as much as he was, but work even harder. I only average like maybe four or five hours sleep a night most nights because have to balance everything, but I choose to. But as far as now being a dad, has that changed much? I get woken up more often. <laughs> but I have so much more passion for what I do because now I'm also doing it for someone else as well. So like, you know, I wake up at 2 a.m. for the tournament. I'm a little bit tired, but right now I know streaming and content is not going to be like this forever and I need to take advantage of it while I can so I can set up my family forever so I don't have to stress about that because I want to stream for the rest of my life. I want to make YouTube videos for the rest of my life. But again, I think I've been very, very blessed with the position I've gotten into. And I think if, you know, Fortnite dies tomorrow, I move on from Fortnite, I won't have the same level of success, but I'm okay with that. It's clear that Ozzy loves this game and has no intention of leaving us and the Fortnite community as a whole behind no matter what happens. And without his impact, I'm not sure Fortnite and esports as a whole would be where it is at today. And for that, we all thank him. I know personally, my channel is hugely inspired off of his player documentaries. So this was a really cool interview for me and a very full circle moment. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video and specifically the new interview style, let me know in the comments below if you want to see more interviews and who I should interview. Click here to watch another video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.